everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. Okay, today's video is a little interesting. This is technically part four of the uh, Style Arc Spencer Woven Pants Sew Along. Um, We're deviating from the pattern though and I'm adding a lining to my pants. So today's video is a standalone tutorial on how to line a pair of um, zip fly pants that don't come with a lining. Um, so how to add that lining and then how to sew that in. So while we are using the Spencer Woven Pants, and this is technically part four of that sew along, you can use this tutorial on any pant pattern with a fly where you would like to add um, uh, a lining. So with a fly and a waistband um, were really the only criteria. <laughs> So um, today I'm going to be showing you the pant pattern I'm using actually has pleats. So we'll be talking about how to um, sew those pleats as darts for our lining so we have less bulk inside of our pants. We'll be going through how we need to cut our lining out, um, how to do that. I mean, you may be using a pant pattern that's a flat front pattern, and if that's the case, you've got it easy um, because you don't need to do anything to the pattern other than I'll show you how to add the pocket you know, back into the lining piece as well, because we'll be having to do that with our lining, because um, our pant pattern has those slash pockets. So we'll be adding the pocket to it so that we have a full front um, for our, our uh, lining pieces. Um, the backs, most of the time, are pretty easy, and you can just cut those out in lining fabric as is. So um, anyway, we will be going over to the cutting table, and I will be showing you all of that. As far as fabric for your lining, um, I am using a Bimber Rayon, which is just a real light lining fabric. You can use whatever you want. I mean, anything that's slippery, um, that's going to glide over the body is, is best. Um, we'll be showing you how to do little um, swing tacks at the bottom so um, you can easily um, keep your hems together so that uh, your you know lining of your leg isn't creeping halfway up your leg <laughs> throughout the day. Keeps everything anchored really, really nicely. Again, I'm using a Rayon Bimberg, but you could use an acetate. You could use a polyester lining. You could use China silk, um, actual silk. That's a nice lightweight um, lining that is slippery enough that um, you can easily get it on and off. And the um, whatever fabric you're using for the outside of your pant is going to glide over that really well so it doesn't get caught on it. Um, that's the other thing. You don't want your outside, your main fabric to get being caught on your lining. You want that all to slide really, really freely um, so that no one knows you have a lining except it feels great um, and you just have a really nice feeling pair of pants. <laughs> so that's what we'll be doing today. Most of this is going to be over uh, above the head at the cutting table and then at the sewing machine. As always, if you have questions, please leave them down below. I am happy to answer those. If you enjoy this content and would like to help support the channel, I do have a coffee account linked down below. That is a virtual tip jar. Everything that I pull from that account um, does go right back into the channel for equipment maintenance, um, you know, lights, cameras, maintenance, that sort of thing, um, software, everything that really I need in order to put out these more educational type videos like the tutorials and sew alongs. So that is linked down below if you're interested. Okay, guys, that's all I've got. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and leave me any questions. I'll see you next week. Okay, so let's line a pair of pants. Now this is part four of the Spencer Woven Pants Sew Along. If you decide you wanna add a lining, the lining does not come with this pattern, but this tutorial is for any pant pattern that you may be wanting to make that um, you would like to put a lining into. So anything you're making out of wool or something where you want a little bit of lining. Now my fabric real quick that I've got here is a Rayon Bimberg. Um, Really, you just want something lightweight and something that's not going to catch on your fashion fabric. For instance, a cotton lawn, um, it's a, it just catches on things, you know, it's kind of a, which makes it easier to sew, but that, because it sticks to itself, but you don't want your lining catching on your pants um, and giving that static look almost, even though it isn't static, it's just the lining catching on the um, outside of the pants. So just choose something that's slippery enough. It doesn't need to be as slippery as jacket lining because you're not, um, it's not tight fitting necessarily. Um, but you do want it to have some play um, and be able to lightly glide over those. Okay. Um, I have, you're going to need your front pattern, pa uh, front leg, front pant pattern. You're going to need your back pant as well. And then you are also going to need 
Um, if you have any kind of a slash pocket or like a curved pocket or anything where the side of the pant is missing because of that pocket, you're going to need that pocket piece. Now, this pant pattern has the, um, they call it the pocket bearer, but it's basically the back part of the pocket and then the pocket bag, which gets sewn like this, or that's how it lays when all is said and done. You just need this piece. It's going to go back behind because we need a um, full front. We're taking the pocket out of the lining um, because that's already in the pants. Um, if you have a grown on fly, which I did make this pants with a grown on fly, um, I added it. Uh, when I cut out my fashion fabric. But if you have that, you want to fold that back because we do not want to have any kind of a fly on our front piece. Um, we want just the regular front, uh, and you'll see why when we get to that part. Finally, you are going to want to have your pants, your um, the pant pattern that you're making. You want it finished all the way up until the point where it's ready for its um, waistband. And you wanna go ahead and have it hemmed. So, um, I mean, you don't have to. You can hem once the lining's in. It's just a lot easier to do it, to do them separately. So I've got these pants hemmed. They're completely sewn. Um, they're horribly wrinkly at the moment. Um, they're just waiting on their um, waistband. So that is where I've stopped with the um, outside portion of my pants. All right, so that is everything you're gonna wanna have for this tutorial. Now, um, before we start talking about what we're cutting out of the lining, I wanna talk a little bit about the front of the pants. Now, this pant pattern has pleats in the front. You don't want pleats in your lining. Um, it's just going to add bulk there, which no one wants. We want that to lie as flat as possible. So if you're making a pair of pants that are darted in the front or that are a flat front, you can just cut them out the same with the lining. You don't have to worry about this step. However, I'm gonna show you how to change your pleats into darts. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is measure our um, pleat. Now I've made my pleat smaller than the pattern because um, I needed the room for my waist. So my pleat is two and three quarters of an inch wide. Um, that's a, I mean, that's kind of a sizable dart, but the original pleat is, three and a quarter wide. That's a pretty good size dart for the waistband. Um, and if you're doing multiple pleats, you may, you know, you might possibly have uh, multiple darts. So if you're doing two smaller pleats, you'll probably just want two smaller darts. But if you're doing one big pleat like this, I'm going to show you how to, you could do a couple of things. You could make it into one dart or you could break it into two darts. I'm going to show you how to break it into two darts because that's just a little bit more involved. And um, then you can, you know, do what you want you know, just do it once or do it twice. All right, so what I wanna do first, I have extended my grain line all the way up to the top of my pant. This is important. And I wanna measure down to, oh, about four and a half inches below the sewing line. So you can see my sewing line is here at this dotted line. Um, I'm gonna go about four and a half inches down and I'm gonna mark right there on that grain line. Okay, so I've got my mark here. Next, I'm gonna make a line perpendicular to my grain line right at that mark. All right, so this is the line where my darts are going to end, okay? Um, all right, so if I, like I said, I've got a two and three quarters of an inch dart here. If I just wanted to do one dart, I'm gonna make a line uh, perpendicular to that first line that I made right in the middle of that dart. So at one and three eighths, I would make a line and, um, or not a line, but I would mark that point right here on this line. And then I would just draw in my dart legs, but we are going to, um, split this up into two darts. So we want a, a decent amount in between about the size of the dart, we want approximately that amount in between. I'm gonna go with just one inch in between my darts because, you know, that's easier. So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm gonna go, I don't know, maybe, I don't wanna go a full inch. I'm gonna go a half inch away from my dart leg and I'm gonna mark that in black. Now I'm gonna measure over. Like I said, I want two darts that are one and three eighths because I'm splitting up my two and three quarters dart. So I'm gonna make another mark, one and three eighths over, like so. So there's one dart leg, there's two dart legs. 
Now I'm going to go over an inch and mark my second first dart leg and then go over one and three eighths and mark that one. Okay. So in between one and three eighths is, um, let's see, five. It's about, well, it, that gets iffy. <laughs> now we're getting into sixteenths. So we're going to go um, about right in between five eighths of an inch and three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to mark the middle of that dart and I'm going to do the same in the middle of that dart. Okay. So once I've found my midpoint, I'm going to make a dot. So I, I've measured um, from that dot down to this line I made and I'm just going to put a dot. You can make a line if you want. I mean, if that's easier for you, we can go ahead and do that. That's the center of that dart. And then... That's the center of that dart. And now we're just gonna connect our dart legs to our dart point. Very easy. Now you can true the top of this. It'll give you a little bit of a jog probably um, when you fold those out. Um, a lot of times, though, with these smaller waist darts, it's, I don't know, it's just not worth it. So there we go. So I'm going to sew these as darts on my lining as opposed to as um, pleats. Okay, so we've got those converted. Now we need to um, cut out our, our fronts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pocket bearer, so this back part of the pocket, and put it behind the pants, and I'm just marked, matching up my notches here, which makes it very easy, which now gives me the full front of my pants. Now, just make sure that's... I'm just going to put uh, pattern weights on mine, but if you want to tape those together lightly, you can totally do that. Okay, so that's a full front on mine. Lastly, if we look at the bottom of our pant here, I have, now I've got a cuff on this pair of pants. I have a fold line here and a fold line here. This top fold line is actually where the bottom of my pants ends. You want to cut your lining um, where your pant finishes, okay? Because so your, my raw edge of my lining is going to be cut here at this line because then I will um, hem it up an inch. And so that will make my lining an inch shorter than my pants. So I don't have anything hanging out at the bottom. So if you've got a pair of pants that let's say there's not a cuff and they just end here and this is your hem allowance, you're going to cut the raw edge of your lining here where the pants would finish um, without the hem allowance basically on it. And then once you've hemmed it up an inch, it'll make the lining an inch shorter than the pants, which is what we want. Um, so that everything stays nice and tucked out of the way. All right, so I'm going to cut out two of my front and I'm going to mark my pleats in here. And then obviously I've got my pocket and I will cut them off where, right where the hem of those pants end. And then I'm going to cut out two of my back. I'm just going to leave that dart in there the way it is. Also cut this off at where the pant finishes. Two of the back. Um, I'm also want to again make note that if you have a grown on fly in the front, <clears throat> you want to fold that out of the way so that this is one smooth line here um, because that's going to get sewn around the fly that's already in your pants. Okay, I'm going to cut these out and then I'll meet you back here and we'll look at our pieces. One thing I want to make note of too, um, when you're clipping your notches for your pattern, make sure you clip the notch or the dot that you've done right here at the bottom of the fly. This is going to be important for us to know. So make sure you do indicate that um, and then clip into any other of your notches, obviously the tops of your darts and all of that. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> okay, let's cut these out and I'll come right back. Okay, so I've got my pieces cut out. It's right out of frame here. I just folded up the pants so that they ended right at that um, end mark. 
and that's where I cut my um, hem off. And then this is the back. So I've got two of my backs. I've gone ahead, I've marked my darts in and I've gone ahead and done those in chalk as well. So we have those two and they are ready to go. Um, and then my front, which, oops, sorry, which um, also, you know, I, I moved the pocket piece, but it's been cut where I've got that pocket piece added to the side. And then I've chalked in my four darts um, on each front to take care of that pleat excess. Now, don't worry about, you know, you are taking some out of the hip here when you're coming down with the dart. But remember, the pleat, when it was put in there, that was adding width at the hip anyway. So you'll be fine. This isn't going to change um, the fit necessarily. It'll make it a little bit not as... Um, roomy as what the pleated outside pants are, but it's not going to make it too tight. Trust me. Um, th that the pleat bulk is put into the entire leg. So you're fine reducing it just a little bit there. Okay. Now for our next step, I want you to go and finish off some seam um, allowances. We want to finish off on both the front and the back. We want to finish off our side seams on both the front and the back. Our center front and center back seams and then our inseams as well. You can finish those off with a um, serger. You can finish them off with a zigzag stitch, uh, pinking shears. However, you're wanting to finish off your um, project is what we need to go do now. So again, your side seams on both the front and the back, your center front and center back crotch seams, and then also your inseams. Um, the tops and the hems we can leave alone for now. So um, go ahead and do that, and then I will meet you at the sewing machine, and we are going to start sewing these together. All right, so I have got in this pile of fabric, I have my two fronts and my two backs, and um, each, this is one of my fronts, each has been, um, seam allowance has been finished center front, the side seam, and the inseam. I have also gone ahead and pressed that one inch hem allowance to the wrong side. My bottom is not finished yet. We'll do that once the pants are assembled. If just if you go ahead and press that now, it just makes a really good um, memory crease there so that when we do turn it up for the hem, it's just a lot easier to sew that up. But so I've just gone ahead and give that a good press, especially in this lining fabric that presses like a dream. Um, I've done that on all four legs. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to sew all well, I have six darts. I have four in my front, uh, two on each side, and then two on my back, one on each side. So now we're just gonna go to the machine and we are going to sew all of our darts. You don't really need to watch me do that, it's just a dart. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew all six of my darts and press those towards the side seam, all of those towards the side seam, and then I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so our next step is that we are going to sew our legs um, separately. So I've already done one side here. So we've got our uh, darts all, that's the bottom, <laughs> our darts all nice and pressed and um, sewn up there on the front and the back. And I am putting one front and one back, right sides together. And then I am sewing them at their seam allowance on the inseam leg and on the out seam. Okay? So our crotch is all open. So I'm doing, I'm gonna do that on. I've done that on this side. So now I'm gonna do it on this side. So I'm just gonna take my back, which is right here, and put it right side up, like so. And then lay its corresponding front right side down. So I've got them right sides together and I'm gonna sew them at their out seam and also at their inseam, okay? So go ahead and do that. So those two, um, well, four seams, one for each leg, and then um, we're gonna come back here and we're actually going to, after we do this, we're gonna hem each pant leg real quick. Be right back. Okay, so once your, um, Side seams and inseams are sewn. You'll have two legs. You'll have a right leg and a left leg, and they are um, right sides together right now. I'm now going to go to the ironing board, and I'm going to press these side seams open and the inseams open, so all four of those. I'm also going to finish off the raw edge of the hem once I've pressed everything open and um, go ahead and 
press that up the one inch and just give it a good press, okay? So press open your side seams, both inseam and outseam, finish off the raw edge of your hem, and then go ahead and press that up one inch. And I will meet you right back here. Okay, so we've got our separate legs. I have finished off the hem, pressed my seam allowances open, finished off my hem, as you can see, and then pressed that up as well, um, that one inch. Now, one thing that's important to note is that um, you already determined the hem of your pants. So um, the outer shell of your pant that is already done and hemmed, um, those would have been tried on, um, marked the hem marked, decided where you were going to hem them because those outer pants and they've been tried on without the waistband on, so carefully tried on. <laughs> um, so that hem's already been sewn on the um, outside of the pant. So any changes, you know, shortening, lengthening, any of that that you needed to make should have been already done on the pattern when you cut out your lining. I forgot to mention that. Okay, let's really quickly now, we're just going to zip this. Um, we're going to top stitch this. I'm just going to sew this hem up at this one inch of a seam allowance all the way around on both legs. And uh, then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have two legs with hems. As you can see, it's just a top stitched hem. Um, those are going to be inside your pants. No one's ever going to see them. Also, the beauty, if your darts aren't perfect, that's also fine because no one's going to see them. <laughs> All right, we want to turn one pant leg inside out and one pant leg right side out. So this one is going to be wrong side out. And this one will be right side out. Okay, and now we're going to want to put the right side out leg inside the other leg. And we are, so our fronts are together, that front crotch seam is together. And I'm going to pop a pin right here at that center crotch seam and then our back crotch seams should be right sides together. We'll pop a pin in there, okay? We'll pop a couple of pins. So now we are sewing the crotch. Now, we need to make note of that notch which was the bottom of our zipper. And I can see it right there. I'll pop a pin there. Now, you want to err on the side of sewing it less. So being within the pant there, as opposed to sewing past it, because we'll be hand sewing this rest part of the seam to the fly. And hand sewing covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> So, um, but if you sew it up too much past that notch, you're going to have issues um, getting it to go around the crotch when we go to sew it in. So being a little short of that is better than um, being past it. In a perfect world, you would match it up perfectly, but if we have a little wiggle room there, that's better. All right, so this white pin is where I'm going to stop um, sewing or start sewing, doesn't really matter, okay? So we're gonna leave the rest, this is the rest of the um, crotch seam in the front open. So we are gonna sew from the back all the way around to the front and we're gonna stop at that notch, okay? So let's go over to the machine and do that. I'm actually gonna start at the front. So this is where that notch is that we made. My seam allowances on my pattern are 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to start right where that pen is. Making sure that my raw edges, or not raw, my finished edges <laughs> are lined up. And I want to make sure that that, when I get to the um, crotch seam, that that, is, that seam allowance is staying open on both sides.
All right, once we have sewn that seam, we can pull the leg out from the center. Although I do want everything to be wrong side. Okay. So now we've got our, this is the, the front of the pant, and we've got our fly open just a little bit, and then it goes all the way around to the back, okay? So what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna go to the pressing table, and we are going to press this, this crotch seam allowance open all the way around. And when we get to this part that's not sewn, we just wanna fold that back, three-eighths, whatever your seam allowance is, mine's three-eighths, and give that a good press, okay? So let me go to the ironing board and do that, and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so now we have a lining and a pair of pants, and we are now going to put them together. So our lining should be wrong side out, so you can see that I've got my seam allowances all showing. My pants should be right side out. I still have a really long zipper on this. I'm gonna, we'll cut that off when I put my waistband on next week. All right, so we're gonna unzip our zipper, and we are going to place our lining inside of our pants. Wrong side of lining to wrong side of pants. Okay, so I'm setting them in here. We want them to be wrong sides together. All right. Once we have those inside, we are going to match up here at the waist our side seams. So this is wrong side together. Side seams, wrong sides together. Put a pin in there. Our back darts are easy because um, they're the same. So we're going to match those up. We're gonna match up our center back seam allowance. Make sure both of those, all those are pressed open. Our other dart. Then our side seam. Okay, when we get to our front, we're gonna be hand sewing um, the lining around the fly, but we're not doing that quite yet, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you are doing a flat front um, trouser or you know darts, this should all match up. And then you want your lining to sit just inside. Oh, wait. All right, so when we get to the front, we are going to pin, um, I mean, if you have darts in the front of your pants, you're just gonna match those. I obviously, obviously have darts in my um, lining, but pleat in my front. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that. All right, on one side of your fly, you have the fly shield here, okay? So that seam allowance should come, um, it's going to cover the fly shield, but it should come, you know, I don't know. And you may want to push this back a little more than the um, 3 eighths, a little more than your seam allowance, and this is where we can get kind of creative. Um, not too much, though, actually. That might be fine. So basically, you can kind of see up here at the top, there's my teeth. This comes in just a little bit below that. Again, we are going, we'll hand sew all of this down later. Right now, we're just worried about the waist. Okay, so that fits in there really nicely. Now, you can see that this is going to go get sewn down to the bottom of this fly shield. And then here's our gap. And then the other side... Gonna go up underneath that fly shield. Again, we'll make that look better. Okay. 
On this side, so this is the overlap, you are definitely gonna need to take in some excess because remember our um, zipper is offset. It's not right at center front. So we're just gonna kind of match those darts up right here with the pleat-ish. So that all fits one to one. And then when we get to this point, we just wanna make sure that that, and I'm taking that quite a bit more to where it's just right behind that zipper. You wanna give your zipper um, pull room to move, but we want the top of that waist to fit pretty much one-to-one. -one. So just pull that back as much as you need to for it all to fit. Cause this also can, um, it's also determining, you know, your how far over you put your zipper, um, your fly, which kind of determine is determined by the size of your zipper tape, and there's a lot of factors. So we just want that lining though to come right behind, kind of basically lining up with that inside stitching of that zipper. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do, now that we have our lining all pinned in, is we're just gonna go around the entire top of the pant at within the seam allowance. My seam allowance up here is uh, three eighths of an inch, so I'm gonna go around at a quarter of an inch and just baste the lining into place all the way around the pant, okay? And um, I'll meet you right back here and we'll get the fly part all taken care of. All right, so I basted my lining in place all the way around the um, waistband, making sure that the edge where it finishes off at the front is folded under um, on both sides. And again, I had to go quite a bit more inside on this overlap piece. All right, now we are going to hand sew the inside of our fly together. So to do that, I wanna turn my pants wrong side out. I'm also stuffing the leg of my lining down into each leg of my pant while we do this. We will tack this lining in place right before we end today. Okay. So let's turn our pants wrong side out. Okay. So here is our fly situation. Um, we've got the lining that is just barely open. Um, we are basically going to be tucking this up and around um, the fly shield like so. So we want the fly shield to stay in place. Now this first side, so the underlap where we have our fly shield, this is you know pretty easy. You're just going to want to pull it taut and pop some pins and we are only pinning through the lining and the fly shield. Okay. So we will hand sew that together. Now we have the opposite side of the fly here. Remember, we went, gosh, quite a bit more of that folded in. But we just want to lay this nice and flat, and I am lining. Usually the fabric will kind of fold over on its own at this point. But this is what I mean that hand sewing covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> because you can really just mess around with the fabric until it does what you want it to do. Um, because we obviously have this um, fly shield tacked down right here. So we just want to be right up next to that. And we are going to put some pins in and I'm just lining up that folded edge with the stitching on that zipper tape. And then it's just gonna go right next to that area. Try not to stab yourself in the hand. Right next to that area where that fly shield is stitched down. 
And remember when I said you want to err on the side of not sewing it quite enough? When we sewed that lining, we've got a little bit of a hole here um, at the base, but that's okay. That everything's all tucked in. We've our seam allowances are finished. That's actually going to work really, really well. Okay, so we've got it pinned this way, and then it comes up around, and we have it pinned to the tape on this side. All right, let me go grab a hand sewing needle and some thread, and we I'm going to show you how to do a slip stitch. All right, I've got a hand sewing needle. I've got some thread. I am going to thread said hand sewing needle. And I like to double up my thread. I just find that it doesn't unthread very easily. You don't want it to be about your forearm. I'm going to, I've licked my finger. I've got both uh, tails pinched in between my fingers. I wrap it twice and then I roll it off my finger, pull tight, and that's how I get a knot. <laughs> that's, I mean, you can do your knots the way you want. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna start on the overlap side. So this side here. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do the stitch. I'm not, you don't need to watch me do the whole thing, but I'm just going to come up under here under the fold and I'm going to bury my knot. I know that a lot of people that do hand sewing say, don't make a knot. You're going to do a little back stitch. It's up to you. I just like to tuck my little knot in there. There we go. We've got a lot of, uh, little, threads here from all of our fabric. Just tuck that in there. Okay. All right. So I buried my um, knot. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to, I'm running it right through that fold in between the two layers there. And then I'm taking a little bite out of the zipper tape. And so I'm coming, I usually come up out and then pull it back just a little bit, run along that fold, and then put it through the zipper tape, pull through. And I'm gonna do this all the way down, and then all the way back up. Oops, and if you accidentally pull in a little, there we go. And again, I've got some excess thread from the fabric wanting to come out, okay. So I'm just going to go down and then come back up doing that hand stitch. Um, then I'll meet you back here, and we're going to put swing tacks in the hem of our pants. We're almost done with our lining. Okay, so once our fly is all nicely hand sewn in there, all nice and neat, we are now going to um, give ourselves some swing tacks um, here at the bottom that connect the um, hem of our pant to the hem of our lining with some wiggle room. We don't want it to be too tight, but that keeps the leg from riding up, um, the lining of the uh, pant from riding up, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do a um, crocheted, actually, is what I've seen it called. This is my mentor showed me how to do this. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your leg is not twisted. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you're um, lining up your inseam, of your lining with the inseam of your pant and that nothing is twisted. So I'm just checking that real quick. That looks to be good. Okay. So that looks like this seam and this seam do line up. Okay. So I'm just going to lay those down for a second. All right. I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to Basically, I'll have, I'll have four threads going through it. So I'm going to um, thread it per normal real quick. And I'm gonna make it, I don't know, maybe 24 inches long. 
and then I'm gonna cut. So I've gone through and doubled up my, my thread, okay? So it's gone through. Now I'm going to thread it again with another piece of thread. And I just pull that first little grouping out of the way so that you can get that through that hole. And now, see, I'm gonna pull it through, maybe. So that all four of my ends are equal-ish. <laughs> and then we'll cut it. And now I'm going to knot all four of those together. Okay. So, oh, hold on, we're twisted. When all is said and done, there we go. We will have four threads Maybe I am all tangled here. Okay, I've got one that's super long for some reason. Let me <laughs> let me try and knot that off again correctly. Okay, so when all is said and done, I have four threads going through there. It just makes it a little bit thicker. I do this when I sew my buttonholes on by hand too. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and we're just gonna take a bite out of the seam allowance here at, I think this is an inseam, okay? And pull it through and there's our knot. We're gonna go through that same spot again, pull it through, and now we've created, we're not gonna pull it all the way through, but now we've created a loop, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the loop that we've just created and spread it out with my two fingers, okay? <laughs> now, I'm going to take, actually, we're gonna spread it with my middle finger and my thumb. I'm gonna take my pointer finger and I'm gonna grab the single thread, which is attached to the needle, and pull it through that loop and then pull it taut, okay? So we're grabbing that thread, pulling it through our loop, creating a new loop, pulling it taut. Does that make sense? Okay, loop, grab that thread, pull it through, create a new loop with that thread we just pulled through, pull that taut. And when you get going really quickly at it, We want our thread chain to be, I don't know, inch and a half, inch and a half, two inches. It's pretty easy to get going quick at this. That's probably good. Okay, so when we're ready to be done, instead of pulling this through and creating another loop, we're gonna pull it through completely, pull it taut and that knots it off. Now we're going to take our needle onto the inside of the lining, do the same thing. Pull it until you can't pull it anymore, until it hits that loop we just made. And then we're gonna go through again. And then with this loop, we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna go through the hole once, twice, pull it taut, and you're good. Trim your thread. There you can see that is a crocheted thread chain. So we're gonna put those on both of the inseams and both of the out seams, um, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so you now have lined a pair of pants. Um, so now you will just go and finish off, um, the only thing needs to be done is the waistband, any belt 
loops, any of that jazz. Um, so you'll finish off the top of your pants now per the instructions. If you're following along with the sew along, we will do that next week. Um, but yeah, all we have to do is put on the waistband, put our belt loops on, which I've added, um, and then do our button and buttonhole. And we have a lined pair of wool pants. As always, leave any comments you have down below. I'm happy to answer those as soon as I can. Have a good one, and I'll see you next week.